Hi, and welcome to the only video for section 4.5. As I mentioned, or as I alluded to in section 4.4, four, uh, these couple videos we're doing right now are, are just sort of single shot videos. Um, section 4.5 is optimization problems. So again, there's so many different types that you could be that you could encounter. Um, I just didn't think it would be much much uh, good use of your time to work a ton of examples. If you don't really have an issue with it, you're kind of having to sit through or fast forward to get to the ones you need. So as I said in section 4.4, if you have a specific problem that's really giving you trouble, go ahead and put a comment on the video page. Go ahead and send me an email. And I'll see if I can't, uh, you know, help walk you through it, help get you through it. But there's going to be similar steps for all of these problems. And so that's really what I wanted to focus on here. And then we will look at an example. But when you have these types of problems, and these are the calculus word problems, for lack of a better word. They call it optimization problems, but they're the word problems. The first thing that I can't stress enough is to read and understand as best you can the problem. So I know word problems are a major issue with math students, so no matter the level, whether you're you know, starting out in grade school, if you're in high school, if you're in you know, calculus one, they, they give people trouble. One of the biggest things I see for people is this first step. People don't want to read the problem and figure out what's going on. They just want to start getting something down on the paper. Let me just start writing. Let me start putting out an equation before you've even read what's going on. So first thing I would stress to you, read the whole problem, then reread it and try to understand, okay, what, what's actually taking place here? What is this word problem describing to me? Because once you can sort of put it in real life terms or uh, situation, it becomes a little bit easier to start figuring out equations. And another way to help that is that if possible, draw a diagram. I've had a lot of talented uh, artistic students throughout the years I've been teaching. And some of you do some really good diagrams and then you get stuck. So diagrams are good, but they don't have to be, you know, art class worthy. Just even a general sketch so that you can kind of look at it and figure out like, oh, okay, here's where my X variables are, here's where my Y variables are, here's where my radius is, whatever the type of problem it might be. But if you can just draw a diagram or sketch a diagram what's going on, that's going to help you. And then third, once you sort of have that diagram, if possible, is define or assign the variables. So again, another issue that comes in with these kind of problems is people want to start putting down an equation and you just start throwing X's and Y's everywhere you can and you don't even really know what X and Y is referring to. So make sure that if you're putting down an X, you know that it means it's the height of a building. Or if you're putting down an R, it's referring to the radius of a cylinder, things like that. So just be careful as you're getting all these variables out there that you're actually being careful what they, what they refer to. Once you have that, then go ahead and try to generate an equation or sometimes you have to Maybe put a couple of them together because ideally we just want one equation with one unknown in order to be able to perform these optimization problems. But we may start with a, an equation that has a couple different variables. So we need to build a few equations so that we can start either doing elimination or substitution in order to optimize the problem. So that's what step five is, is express the equation, one of the equations we wrote in one variable and 
and then define the domain for that equation. We're going to do this because if we're set within a closed interval, we can then use our closed interval method to find the optimization. Optimization, I should talk a little bit about that real quick. This is figuring out uh, what's the best ticket price to set in order to generate as many ticket sales at a baseball stadium. Or um, if we want to minimize the cost of production of an aluminum can, what dimensions do we want to make the can in order to minimize our cost? So that's what we're talking about in terms of optimization problems. We're either trying to maximize some value or minimize some value depending on the problem. And so we want to define the domain because if we're talking about, uh, well, example here, the area of a field, the area is not going to be an infinite. We're going to build a fence and we're only going to have a certain, a certain uh, potential area. So we want to set what are those actual limits going to be. And then six is use our methods that we have for finding max and min values. And again, if we have set the domain to restrict it upon a certain interval, then we can use our closed interval method that we saw a few videos ago, and it makes it pretty easy. And remember what the closed interval method is. We figure out the value at one endpoint, we figure out the value at another endpoint, and we figure out the value at the critical point where we take the derivative, set it equal to zero, that gives us a number, plug that value back in. So let's look at an example. Um, let me erase this so we have the whole board to work with here. So if you need to pause and write this down, fine. And again, I, I looked at a bunch of examples in the book. Um, so I, I work an example that's actually worked out in the book and then I went to some of the exercises. And I was gonna pick a few to do, but again, I didn't really know which would be the best uh, ones that might give you guys trouble. So if you want to let me know, I can maybe do a supplemental video if enough people have uh, the same issues with the same problems. But this one here, we have the following. A farmer has 2,400 feet of fence and wants to fence off a field that borders a river. No fence is needed along the river. dimensions should uh, what dimensions should the area be or should the fenced area be to maximize the area. So, I know I read it to you, so you already kind of had to read it or at least listen to me. But let's go back through step one. Read it, try to figure out what's going on, try to understand it. So a farmer has 2,400 feet of fence, and there's a river out in his pasture and he wants to set up a fence, so he'll have to basically put three sides, because we don't need fence along the river. 
So starting at the river, come out, come over, come back to the river. 2,400 feet of that fence to set up an area to put whatever, whatever livestock he has. And we wanna know what should be the dimensions on that fenced area in order to maximize the area of land in order to put the livestock. So now I have a, if possible, let's draw a picture. And we can sort of draw it here. So we got this river. Like I said, it does not have to be uh, Michelangelo quality here. And then we have the fence. So up one side, across and back down. So that's essentially what we're doing. This green length is 2,400 total. And we want to maximize the area. So now, what was step three here? Uh, define our variables, all right? So let's call this side X and this side Y. Well, that means what? That means that this side here is also X because these lengths coming out from the river have to be the same length. It's, it's, I can't have a fenced in area that looks like this. It's going to be a rectangle. That's going to maximize my area. So I have this picture and then start with some equations. Well, area is what? Area is length times width. So area is x times y. But as I mentioned, we want one equation with one unknown so that we can take the derivative of that. So what's another equation I can get off of the information I was given? Well, I know what? x plus x plus y is a total length of 2400. So 2x, x plus x is 2x, plus y is 2400. So I can use substitution method here. If I subtract 2x from both sides, I get y is equal to 2400 minus 2x. And if I now plug this back into this equation, I get that the area is x times 2400 minus 2x, which if I simplify this, distribute the x, I get 2400x minus 2x squared. So now I have one equation. Area is equal to this, 2400x minus 2x squared. That's what I want to maximize. I do that how? Oh, I need to set up the domain, right? Well, what's the smallest value x could be? So I want to know x is between what potential values? Well, the smallest x could be is zero, right? I don't come away from the water at all. I just line up 2,400 feet of fence right along the river. It's not gonna really help me much, but that is technically the smallest value. What's the biggest value that x could be? So now think about this. I'm not gonna give it to you right away. Kind of give it some thought. What's the largest value of x that I could pick that'll work within this problem? Well. Could I pick x is infinity? Well, no, because I only have 2,400 feet of fence, right? So could x be 2,400? Again, the answer would be no, and why is that? Because if x was 2,400, I just have one line that comes out. I never have a piece that comes back. So that means what? X, the biggest x could be would be 1,200, right? 1,200 up, doesn't come out at all, and then 1,200 back. So if x, the biggest value x could be would be 1,200. So y could be 2,400. x can only be uh, 1,200 because I got two pieces of x. So I'd have to have half of the 2,400. So that's my domain. So now, now I have that set. I have it as one equation. Now I can use, because it's a closed interval, 0 to 1,200, I can use the closed interval method. So in order for that, I'm going to need what? I'm going to need the derivative of a. So if I do that, I derivative of 2400x is 2400 minus 4x. If I take the derivative of 2x squared, and I want my critical number. Because again, the critical number is where this could be a max or min. So that means this thing is equal to 0, gives me a critical number. So 2400 is equal to 4x which means x is 600. So again, think about that closed interval method. 
the max or min will occur at either endpoint or at one of the critical numbers within that interval. And does 600 fall in the interval? Yes, it does. So now let's figure that out. Well, at the endpoints, that's what? That's f of 0. So if I plug 0 into here, I get 0. And f of 1,200, well, if I use this one here that's not expanded out, I get what? 2 times 1,200 is 2,400. 2,400 minus 2,400 is 0. So this is also 0. So as we expected, there's no area covered. So then f of 600 is what? If I plug it in, you can plug it into either one. If you do the first one, a little easier to do the math. 2400 minus 2 times 600 is 1200. <clears throat> so 600 times 1200 is 720,000. So we could potentially have 720,000 square feet. What's the question asking? What are the dimensions? So my x is 600. So I can plug it back into either of these equations. So if I plug it in here, 2 times x, so 2 times 600, plus y is 2400. So 1200 plus y is 2400. So y, if I subtract 1200 from both sides, is 1200. So that means the dimensions of this fence should be 600 by 1200 in order to maximize the area of the uh, pasture in order to put the livestock. So that's it. I know it's kind of a simplistic example. Maybe I shouldn't say simplistic, but uh, straightforward if we follow the steps. And again, hopefully by following those steps, it'll help you get through some of the other examples or some of the other exercises uh, that are in this chapter. So that wraps up section 4.5. Come on back and we will look at 4.6.